on World News Tonight. Condemning Russia. European Commission chief makes a strong remark on Russia using food as a weapon on war in Ukraine. Research continues. Promising news from the WHO as they say monkeypox can be contained with tracing and isolation. Horrific shooting. Over a dozen children killed in an elementary school in Texas. Tonight, more details on the mass shooting. And fluttering orange. Mexico was blessed with critically endangered monarch butterflies as they grew its presence. This is Adaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We begin with an update on the Davos 2022 Economic Forum. European Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen called for talks with Moscow on unlocking wheat exports that are trapped in Ukraine as a result of a Russian sea blockade. Russia is using food as a weapon in its war on Ukraine. That's according to European Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen on Tuesday, who condemned Russia for targeting Ukraine's grain silos and blockading ships full of grain in the Black Sea, saying a food crisis is fast approaching. It cannot be in Russia's interest that because of Russia, people are dying of hunger in the world. Von der Leyen called for talks with Moscow on unlocking some 20 million tons of wheat exports that are trapped in Ukraine as a result of a Russian blockade. Three months after President Vladimir Putin ordered Russian forces to invade, Ukraine is top of the agenda at this year's World Economic Forum, a gathering of more than 2,000 business, NGO and political leaders. And on top of this, Russia is now hoarding its own food exports as a form of blackmail, holding back supplies to increase global prices or trading wheat in exchange for political support. This is using hunger and grain to wield power. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken last week accused Russia of holding hostage food supplies for not just Ukrainians, but also millions of people around the world. Moscow rejects this allegation. David Beasley, executive director of the United Nations World Food Program, told the world is facing a global food shortage and Russia's actions are pushing the crisis to the brink. Russia and Ukraine together account for nearly a third of global wheat supplies. Russia's prominent jail opposition figure Alexei Navalny has lost an appeal against a nine-year prison term, but not before launching a scathing attack on the war in Ukraine. Jailed Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny on Tuesday lambasted President Vladimir Putin, casting the Kremlin chief as a doomed madman who started a stupid war that was butchering the innocent people of both Ukraine and Russia. Navalny, Russia's most prominent opposition figure, was appealing against a nine-year jail sentence he was handed in March for fraud and contempt of court, on top of two and a half years he is already serving. His appeal was rejected by a court in Moscow. He used his address in court to deliver a stinging attack on Putin and the war, a rare public act of dissent in a country where it is a criminal offence to criticise the army and its actions in Ukraine. Berating Putin's Russia as a state run by thieves and criminals, Navalny said the current leaders of Russia would ultimately be crushed by the forces of history and burn in hell for creating a bloodbath in Ukraine. He said, quote, one madman has got his claws into Ukraine and I do not know what he wants to do with it, adding that this war was built on lies. The judge repeatedly interrupted Navalny. Putin states the special military operation in Ukraine is necessary to demilitarize and denazify the country. Navalny denies all the charges against him and says they were fabricated to thwart his political ambitions. Here's his lawyer, Olga Mikhailova. The ministerial committee demanded Navalny be released, but the legal norms do not function. Nothing happens. He still has not been released. She added that Navalny will be transferred to a strict regime colony. Ukraine is gathering the bodies of dead Russian soldiers thrown amongst the rubble of the formerly occupied towns and trying to verify their identities in the hope of exchanging them for prisoners of war. 
As Ukraine pushes Russian forces back from towns in the Kharkiv region, volunteers are sifting through what the Russians left behind. In this case, the bodies of its soldiers. From here, we retrieved the body of a Russian serviceman. He was in the basement, in the kitchen. He was left alone when his fellow servicemen retreated. Most likely, he shot himself. At a recent recovery effort in the village of Mala Rohan, just east of Kharkiv city, volunteers were working to gather the bodies of Russian soldiers strewn among the rubble of formerly occupied towns and using everything from DNA to tattoos to verify their identities. Ukrainian Armed Forces Captain Anton Ivanakov said the bodies are sometimes used as part of prisoner exchanges and other times in exchanges for Ukrainian bodies. Two volunteers wrapped the bodies in white plastic tarps and lifted them into a waiting ambulance. These two bodies had their hands tied. Most likely this was done by Russian soldiers themselves. Maybe they were deserters or this was a punishment measure. Volunteers have helped the military gather 60 bodies in the northeastern region of Kharkiv where Russian forces have retreated in recent weeks, stacking them up in a refrigerated rail carriage. Ivanikov said the bodies will travel on the train to Kyiv, where the team negotiating exchanges is based. Moscow calls its actions a special operation to disarm its neighbor. Kyiv said it never threatened Russia in any way and says the attack was completely unprovoked. Three months after invading Ukraine, Russian forces are trying to encircle Ukrainian troops in twin cities straddling the Seversky Donets River in eastern Ukraine. Russian forces had not given up attempts to cross the river. In eastern Ukraine, there is no end in sight as fighting rages on. In the town of Yakovlivka, a Russian tank fires a shell towards the position of a Ukrainian soldier. Who can stop this war? We don't want to provoke them, because then the Russians start firing again. Residents say there is no more electricity, running water or gas in Yakovlivka. The two-lane road was once used to send reinforcements to Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, two cities which are under siege in the neighboring region of Luhansk. The governor of Donetsk, the region where Yakovlivka is located, said Monday that battles were raging in the direction of Luhansk. The situation is difficult. The front line is under shelling at all times. There is heavy fighting in the direction of Luhansk and Liman. The enemy is trying to break through and capture Liman, so it can push on with its offensive towards Slovyansk and Kramatorsk. The governor said that no more than 320,000 residents had stayed behind in Donetsk, a region which was once home to 1.6 million people. Close by in Bakhmut, some civilians say they've got no choice other than to stay. The authorities in the area have been trying to convince civilians to leave. In some towns, evacuations have even been made mandatory. The Quad leaders met in Tokyo. They discussed a wide range of issues, including the Ukraine crisis and ensuring a free and open Indo-Pacific region. The leaders of the United States, Australia, India and Japan on Tuesday reaffirmed their shared goal of a free and open Indo-Pacific region. As part of the Quad's second meeting in eight months, the Ukraine crisis topped the agenda in Tokyo. All four sides stressed that such a forceful act will not be tolerated in the Indo-Pacific region. We cannot let the same thing happen in the Indo-Pacific region. Under such difficult conditions, we need to be united and show solidarity among the four countries. Australia's new Prime Minister Anthony Albanese noted his new government's priorities align with the Quad agenda which the U.S. President Joe Biden underlined as not just a passing fad. It's uh, the fact of the matter is that we have a lot of work to do, keeping this region peaceful and stable, tackling this pandemic and the next one, and addressing the climate crisis as referenced by our new colleague. The latest agreement also covered a new joint response plan, which will include an information sharing system to deter China's illegal fishing in the region. The Quad leaders have further agreed to invest more than 50 billion U.S. dollars in infrastructure in the region over the next five years and support the developing countries facing debt problems, also a move aimed at keeping Beijing's growing power in check. 
They discussed the North Korea's recent flurry of military activities and agreed to cooperate for the regime's complete denuclearization. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Cases of monkeypox are continuing to rise steadily, but the World Health Organization says the outbreak is containable. This comes as a number of countries are reporting their first cases, including the UAE and the Czech Republic. But the important thing right now is to realize that this outbreak can be contained. The World Health Organization said the new global outbreak of monkeypox, while unusual, can be contained with contact tracing and isolation. At a press briefing Tuesday, the WHO's Dr. Rosamond Lewis said there are over 250 confirmed and suspected cases of monkeypox in at least 16 countries. This is an emerging disease. It has been emerging for the last uh, 20, 30 years. It's not unknown. It's very well described. Um, but we have a new situation of this emerging disease, which has now appeared and begun to um, spread among uh, population groups, which normally would not, would not have this. Monkeypox is a usually mild viral infection that is endemic in parts of West and Central Africa, and until the recent outbreak has only rarely been seen in other parts of the world. Symptoms include fever and a distinctive bumpy rash. Professor Jimmy Whitworth teaches at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Monkeypox is spread through close contacts. That, so that means um, touching somebody or um, being exposed to their bedding or sharing utensils in some way. The majority of the recent cases have been reported in Europe the continent's largest outbreak ever, according to Germany, which recommends that those with the illness or exposed to it isolate for 21 days. Cases have also been detected in the U.S., Canada, Australia, and the United Arab Emirates. Dr. Lewis said that many, but not all of the cases, have been reported in men who have sex with men, most in their 30s. Uh, we don't know yet that this is a sexually transmitted infection. What we've described, as we described earlier, that skin-to-skin -skin contact um, is the primary mode, and we have no, we don't yet have the information as to whether this would um, be transmitted through uh, body fluids, for example. There are vaccines for monkeypox, also used to prevent smallpox, targeted for those who may be at risk. Germany has ordered 40,000 doses in case an outbreak there becomes more severe. France, Denmark and Britain are also offering a limited number of shots to those exposed. China faced new accusations that it was sanctioning abuses of Uyghurs at the highest levels as a vast document leak came out during a controversial visit by the UN rights chief. Uyghur Muslims detained in camps like these. Those who attempt to flee, targeted by a shoot-to-kill policy. Just some of the details revealed by data hacked from police computer servers in China. The files, called the Xinjiang police files, were passed to the BBC earlier this year and have been authenticated over the last few months. Most of the leak focuses on Shufu County, a predominantly Uyghur region in Xinjiang, a province in the west of China. It shows details of thousands of detainees. Some of the reasons for detention are revealed, such as Yusup Ismail, detained for traveling to unfriendly countries. For others, like Hagul Tebakul, there is no reason given. The leak gives more detail of one particular camp in Shufu County. It shows photos of guards subduing inmates, as well as supposed indoctrination ceremonies. There are also leaked documents implicating high-ranking officials. This speech stamped as classified, was delivered by Zhao Keji, China's Minister for Public Security. He suggests that there are at least two million people infected with extremist thought in southern Xinjiang alone. These images contradict the official line from Beijing, who have always denied any wrongdoing and have previously called claims of mistreatment in camps as the lie of the century. The release of the documents coincides with the visit of Michel Bachelet, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. The visit is controversial, with the US claiming that she was unlikely to get an unmanipulated picture of China's rights situation. 
Bachelet is set to visit Xinjiang, where these alleged human rights violations took place. U.S. President Joe Biden has urged Americans to push back against gun lobbyists after yet another school shooting killed at least 19 children and two teachers in South Texas. A teenage gunman opened fire at an elementary school in South Texas on Tuesday, killing more than a dozen children and at least two teachers in the latest instance of gun violence sweeping the United States. At approximately 11.32 a.m. this morning, there was a mass casualty incident at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. Uh, this school uh, has children that are in second, third, and fourth grade. Authorities said the suspect, identified as 18-year-old Salvador Ramos, acted alone and was apparently killed by police officers responding to the scene. Governor Greg Abbott said two officers were struck by gunfire, but said their wounds were not serious. To lose a child is like having a piece of your soul ripped away. A visibly shaken President Joe Biden addressed the nation in the evening, urging Americans to stand up to gun lobbyists and pressure members of Congress to pass sensible gun laws. Why are we willing to live with this carnage? Why do we keep letting this happen? Where in God's name is our backbone to have the courage to deal with it and stand up to the lobbies? It's a time to turn this pain into action. Biden sounded frustrated as he pointed out he had addressed the nation in 2012 after the deadly Sandy Hook school shooting and that there have since been over 900 incidents of gunfire reported on school grounds. Police said they did not immediately know the motive behind Tuesday's massacre. We have some good news for you. On the medical front, a company has developed a way of expanding the use of immunotherapy to fight cancer by identifying more patients who are eligible for this treatment option. In 2015, former U.S. President Jimmy Carter was in critical condition after a tumor developed in his brain from skin cancer. But thanks to immunotherapy, which utilizes our immune cells to battle cancer, he was cured. Immune cells treat cancer by attacking cancer cells. Cancer cells send signals to prevent immune cells from fighting back. That's called PDL1. The treatment serves as a counter to the signals allowing immune cells to attack cancer cells. Currently used to treat multiple cancers of the head, nose, liver, lungs, skin and kidney, immunotherapy is considered a method that can unlock effective ways to treat more severe cancer patients. A bio company in South Korea has developed a type of artificial intelligence technology that has deep learned over one million cancer cell images. It runs through analyses based on various criteria from immunostimulatory to immunodeficiency levels, which allows it to drastically increase the odds of finding more patients eligible for immunotherapy. As for lung cancer, roughly 40 percent of the patients are known to be treatable with immunotherapy, while it doesn't work on the other 60. But more among the 60% are reactive to the treatment. We found 20 more eligible patients out of 60 subjects by increasing the AI's precision. Published in Journal of Clinical Oncology in March this year, the technology was recently certified as a medical device in Europe. Developers also plan to earn FDA approval for use in U.S. within the next three years. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Ted Rosadonome, Gabe Riesis, has been re-elected as the head of the WHO, setting him up for another five-year term as Director General of the Global Health Body. He was re-elected for his second term in a secret ballot after running unopposed. India has imposed restrictions on sugar exports to keep domestic prices under control. The country will cap sugar exports at 10 million metric tons from June through September, marking the first time in six years that such measures have been imposed. The 2022 World Gas Conference is on in Diego. The event focuses on resolving the global energy supply crisis and boosting investments in the renewable energy sector. Samsung Electronics is investing heavily on the next five years to expand its businesses with strong future growth. Hyundai also announced similar plans. Their goal is to create a domestic hub for next-gen businesses.
Retail giant Amazon is opening its first in-person clothing store with a high-tech twist called Amazon Style. It will use machine learning and palm recognition to provide customers with personalized recommendations and fast checkouts. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you couldn't watch any of the stories we add tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with critically endangered monarch butterflies gracing Mexico with their presence, giving a glimmer of hope to researchers who track the fluttering orange. Thank you for watching us again. Stay safe and have a good night.